going on vinyl community welcome to another video with the record spinner in today's video i'm going to be doing a vinyl haul showcasing all of the records that i acquired within the month of december this year in 2021 I'm not going to talk too much in this intro because we have a lot to get through in this haul. We have tons of Christmas gifts. We have some German Black Sabbath compilations, the latest vault package from Third Man Records, some Japanese Who pressings, and much, much more. It is about to go deep, so without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the latest finds. All right, guys, we are going to be kicking this haul off with the hottest band in the world, my favorite band of all time, and that is Kiss. And if you saw in my last monthly vinyl haul video, I kind of fell down this rabbit hole of snagging some of the recent unofficial pressings that have come out lately of Kiss albums. And basically the reason why they're out is because the 2014 reissues are kind of slowly becoming out of print. Prices are going up and up and up. And while these copies um, are a love-hate type of deal, obviously probably more so hated because collectors do like to have the real thing and these copies are just fakes, whatever. Um, if you are a slightly nutty Kiss collector like I am, they do hold some intriguing value for the reasons that I will show you. If you saw my uh, previous haul video, you probably saw why as I kind of broke down and explained everything, but you'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. But also, I get to rebuy these albums again, and that's always a wonderful thing because, you know, like I said, they're my favorite band, and I'm willing to buy anything with their logo on it as long as my wallet doesn't cry too much. So... The next installments that I got in the unofficial series, we have Love Gun here from 1977. Side note, this was the first ever Kiss album that I got as a kid on cassette when I was two going on three years old. So that kind of shows you how far back I go. Um, and as you can kind of see, uh, the colors are a bit muted in terms of the album artwork, but everything is faithfully replicated. And just like all of these unofficial pressings, they do come with interesting posters slash inserts. Um, basically, they're kind of just like rejiggered, blown up uh, portions of the album artwork, which is kind of interesting. They're, it's kind of cool. And the vinyl itself, they do come pressed on very attractive colors. I will say that. So this one comes pressed on a sort of marbled purple type of vinyl, and it comes on the Casablanca record and Filmworks label. But as you can see, um, Love Gun did get a somewhat custom center label since um, the band members, as they appear on the album cover, also appear on the uh, center label. But they are not to be seen here. But what's interesting is the Pi records logo on the bottom there and pie records was the distributor of the kiss catalog in england back in the 70s so this kind of recreates a british pressing of sorts with that pie records logo there but also interesting because it doesn't feature the band on the label and my copy of hotter than hell has that label with them from love gun and on that it's I, it's a complex web, basically, but, you know, it's a neat little piece to have. It's something, you know, interesting to uh, stand alongside my Walmart splatter pressing of this. And then the next studio album in the progression that also got the unofficial treatment is Dynasty. And as you can see, does come with the sort of hype sticker plastered on the sleeve. Um, some people might find that annoying. I personally don't mind it. It kind of distinguishes it in a way. But uh, if this doesn't bother you, then your problems aren't really that bad. Um, of course, this features I Was Made For Loving You, uh, Sure Knows Something, Dirty Living, their cover 2000 Man, Magic Touch is Great, Hard Times. Uh, basically, it is the Kisco album. Disco, Kiss, Kisco. You, you basically get the point. But... Um, here is the back, and this right here almost resembles the German pressing of the album. What makes it that way? There is the red slash across the top left-hand corner, and there is also the Bellafon logo on the back, and Bellafon was the distributor for the KISS catalog in Germany. Interesting I say that because there is no German logo on the front there, so this is kind of like a sort of composite type of... Uh, type of deal which is quite interesting here's the poster here not exactly the big fold-out poster that we got in the album but kind of just takes the album artwork and kind of riffs with it a little bit which is kind of interesting 
and uh, keeping in line with the sort of color scheme of the text and the fonts. This comes pressed on red vinyl, uh, kind of looks more like a red orangish type of colored vinyl. And of course, it does feature the custom center label there and the, uh, the Bellafon logo on the bottom. So quite interesting indeed. And then the last piece I'll show you in this segment is the next album to come out after uh, Dynasty, and that is 1980s Unmasked. Um, I do have to say, not to say that this album didn't click with me immediately as I was going through the Kiss discography when I was young, but I find myself listening to this album more and more and more with time. It's been be it's been getting played a lot uh, in terms of my rotation uh, as of recently, so it's cool to get another copy of this. As you can see, there's the hype sticker. Here's the back. Nothing really too special about this. Uh, it kind of just looks like the regular uh, U.S. pressing of the album. And it does come with the poster as well. This one's kind of interesting because it does have the image that's featured in the uh, big fold-out poster. But it comes with the, um, the band logo and uh, album title. And then it gives you a blow-up of the, uh, the cartoon album cover. So it's kind of interesting. And as the hype sticker says, pressed on yellow vinyl, overall somewhat matches the sort of color scheme of the uh, album artwork, and of course, custom center label there. So, rather cool piece to have, and I believe there are a few other unofficial pieces out there that I don't have in the collection. I'm kind of hoping I can get my hands on those sometime soon, just to kind of round things off. Not sure if there's going to be more coming in the pipeline but um but yeah these are just kind of interesting um pressings to sit alongside the official stuff that i already own but uh let's face it it's another excuse for me to buy these albums again and just like that i got my hands on it so this right here is an unofficial pressing of the first kiss album Nothing too fancy with this in terms of the artwork. It basically mirrors the original pressing, you know, to the T. Um, doesn't come with a fancy poster like the other unofficial pressings have. But in terms of the color of the vinyl, it does come pressed on this sort of marbleish blue colored vinyl, which matches the uh, color hue of the blue Bogart label nicely. And um, I should point out this. Uh, for a while, I was kind of holding out to get an unofficial pressing of this that didn't include the song Kiss in Time. If you are a diehard Kiss fan and a huge diehard Kiss vinyl collector, um, early pressings of the first album didn't include the song Kiss in Time. It was only added to subsequent pressings, I believe starting like around the summer of 74 to the point where it is now basically instated into the album. And uh, I don't think there has been an unofficial pressing out there without that song, but Needless to say, it's nice to get my hands on another copy of one of the greatest debut albums of all time, and also one of those types of albums where it's basically a greatest hits album. I mean, because literally on this album you have Strutter, Nothing to Lose, Firehouse, Cold Gin, Deuce, Hundred Thousand Years, Black Diamond. I mean, this literally is a greatest hits album. Like there are so many songs on this record that they play to their in their live set still to this day. Um, and just so many kiss classics on this. It is just absolutely phenomenal. Uh so glad to have another copy of it in the collection. All right, guys, going to be showing you all some new releases that I got my hands on recently. First up is in the form of a flexi disc, and that is Hazel English, California Dreamin'. She does a cover of the Mamas and the Papas tune. Um, I absolutely love Hazel English. She is super talented. I interviewed her on my channel. If you want to peel back and check that out. Um, she released her full-length uh, debut album uh, last year called Wake Up. It is one of the best albums of 2020. And um, her label Polyvinyl did this cool um, flexi disc for her cover of a single, which came out digitally earlier this year. So pretty cool to have a flexi disc copy of it. And then we go into the pop punk vein with Green Day BBC Sessions. This two LP compilation brings together the uh, BBC recordings that Green Day did, um, from 94 up until 2001. So this is 
pre-American Idiot, so this is the Green Day that um, perhaps I have a bit more fondness for. Not to say that I don't like American Idiot, but the early stuff is where it's at for me. So pretty cool to see this get a proper release. Nice skate fold sleeve with some liner notes and photos. And this is the Indie variant, which comes pressed on kind of milky clear vinyl, which is pretty cool. So happy to have this in the collection and also uh, cool to see these recordings get properly released. And then we have a bit of a newer band. Um, I actually saw this album up on Bull Moose forever ago, and then it kind of disappeared. And then when I was ordering stuff for the store, I saw that this was made available for pre-order, and I immediately jumped on it. And uh, my coworker Patrick was also wearing them as well, which was pretty cool. And um, it's one of those things where like, I saw the album cover, and I knew that it had to be good. It's one of those cases. I didn't really do too much listening prior to purchasing. I can just, I can tell by, I mean, the band name alone, as well as the cover. And the band is The Electric Looking Glass, and the album is called Somewhere Flowers Grow. Um, kind of a nice nod to uh, 60s Baroque psychedelic pop and um, definitely excited to dig into this album. I mean, with an album cover like this, you know, what could possibly go wrong? Um, and plus also comes with a nice printed inner sleeve with some band photos and some artwork. And um, the pressing that we got at the record store that I work at, um, it's like mystery colored vinyl and my copy appears to be on green vinyl which is very nice and it also matches the uh, center labels quite nicely as well so perhaps i got the definitive pressing i suppose to own it's all subjective and next up we have a newberry comics exclusive um, I'm really excited to dig into this album. This is another one on my radar that I knew that I really wanted to um, check out for myself. <clears throat> and that is Of Montreal, Hissing Fauna, Are You the Destroyer? Um, this is another Of Montreal record where um, Kevin Barnes basically does everything. Uh, he is the sort of main man in Of Montreal. And I have been loving what I have been hearing of Of Montreal uh, during my time digging deeper into their works. And um, I'm very happy to have uh, gotten my hands on this Newberry Comics exclusive uh, pressing, which is limited to 500. And uh, wait till you see what it looks like. This is absolutely killer. Check it out. It is blue inside clear with red and yellow splatter. That is an absolutely gorgeous looking pressing. And I'll also showcase the uh, the second LP just because not one is gonna look entirely the same. All right, and here is the other one. As you can tell, there's probably a little bit more blue in this one, but that is absolutely cool. And uh, definitely excited to uh, dig my way deeper into some more of Montreal with Hissing Fauna, Are You The, Are you the Destroyer? All right, guys, so here is a fresh batch of fresh finds that I got at the record store that I manage. First up is a very solid upgrade that I got for my collection. Uh, what I had previously was the 1996 Sunday's pressing, but then I saw that this version became available once again, and I immediately jumped on it, and I knew that it would be a very solid upgrade to have in the collection, and that is... The debut album of The Monkees, rest in peace, Michael Nesmith. Uh, this is a recent uh, reissue that was done on the Run Out Groove 
uh, label. They do some fantastic reissues. And what's great with this deluxe version of the first Monkeys album is that it features the original stereo mix on one LP. And then you also get a bonus LP of various TV versions, uh, some various remixes, mono versions and whatnot. So it is a very solid upgrade and just a beautiful release as well. Uh, this is also limited and numbered. This is copy number 1,689. I actually remember when this first became available. I ordered copies for the store. We sold out, was on back order for a while, then all of a sudden copies became available once again, and I immediately jumped on it. So it is an absolutely gorgeous package. Uh, nice tip-on glossy uh, gatefold jacket. Nice collage there. And then there is also a insert here with very extensive liner notes and it also breaks down all of the tracks what session musicians were used which take and whatnot very interesting stuff and then also showcase the vinyl comes on a rejiggered version of the um, of the Cold Gems label, instead it says Rhino. Basically, Run Out Groove is associated with Rhino, so it's kind of like a parent company. Um, and these were pressed over at Record Industry, and uh, this was mastered by Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio. So I am sure it is going to be an absolutely gorgeous sounding pressing. And then just for the sake of showing it. Pull out the bonus LP, just so you can see that. Basically, pretty much the same as the um, as the first one there. So, very cool to see this. Uh, they also announced uh, more of the Monkees, their second album. They're doing a deluxe version of that, and I'll uh, definitely be keeping my eyes open for that. And I'll um, upgrade my Sunday's copy for that one. I'm really holding out for a Headquarters one because that's my favorite Monkees album. So that is that. And then up next is the brand new album of a relatively newer band that I have been talking about lately. If you caught my, I want to say my November vinyl haul, I showcased this band a lot. Or it might have been October, October, November, somewhere around that time. Um, the band is called Blackwater Holy Light. This is an all-female kind of doomy shoegaze type of band um i absolutely love their sound um it is very unique very heavy but very lush when it comes to the melodies and harmonies just really good stuff and uh, this is their newest album called silence motion and uh, i was very happy to uh, get this in at the store and snag myself a copy because i have been very eager to check this out uh does come with a pretty cool insert which has the album artwork graphic, all the lyrics here. And this pressing does come pressed on standard black vinyl, nice custom center label. And of course, there is the Riding Easy logo on the B side since they're on the Riding Easy label, home to the Brown Acid series and a bunch of other great bands. So very happy to get my hands on the new Blackwater Holy Light. And then we get into some classic territory. Uh, this is actually a piece um, that I remember seeing at the store long before I started working there. And then I remember I went in with the intention of, um, of buying it and then it was completely gone. And then we managed to get it back in, which is pretty solid. And that is... Nirvana's Incesticide. Uh, this is a compilation that came out back around 1992. Um, various singles, radio recordings, uh, things done for compilations, just this, a bunch of kind of random offcuts. And what is very cool about this pressing here, just I'll showcase everything here. This is the 2LP 45 RPM edition. Um, which is absolutely solid. I remember <clears throat> when this first got uh, released, I was working at FYE all many moons ago, and I remember we got copies, and it was kind of pricey then, uh, but I believe this surely has retained its value. Um, it's definitely a rather kind of pricey piece of Nirvana vinyl, but, uh, but it's also been a missing piece as well, and I was really dead set on getting this official version because I know that there are 
unofficial pressings out there on colored vinyl, single LP. I came very close to kind of just settling for that, but um, I suppose, you know, right place, right time. So I was very happy to get my hands on this. And keeping it somewhat in the same vein, next up, I managed to snag, this is just a more common type release, Foo Fighters Greatest Hits. Uh, we have a million of these at the store, and I figured, what the hell, I'll get myself a copy. And honestly, judging by the set list, uh, set list, the track list, um, All My Life, Best of You, Everlong, My Hero, Learn to Fly, Monkey Wrench, uh, Big Me. I mean, these are all, you know, radio staples that I have listened to growing up. And when I hear it, I'll probably... There, there'll probably be some songs on here that I'll listen to and I'll be like, oh, that's the Foo Fighters. So, you know, and of course I said, you know, it's in the same vein as Nirvana because, you know, Dave Grohl kind of went on to do this and the rest is history. So very solid uh, collection, two LPs, all the hits. There's a couple of new cuts, then new since this came out back in 2009. And just for the sake of showcasing everything, we do have nice printed inners. And the records come in nice polyline sleeves. This is pressed over at Palas, mastered by Chris Bellman, which is absolutely wonderful. He always does a fantastic job. He even mastered the uh, Nirvana Incesticide pressing as well. And that was pressed a quality record pressing, so can't go wrong there. And then I'll showcase the other printed inner as well. Just for the sake of showcasing everything. And there's even an insert as well. So here is the printed inner. And then here is the insert with some liner notes from Dave Grohl. And then upside down. Here's all the credits for each of the tracks. And then same deal with the vinyl on this one. Custom labels, rather sharp looking, gorgeous pressing. Gotta say, with just this one clip in general, it almost feels as if Christmas came early. And to only think that Christmas is just around the corner, it's about to get better, guys. All right, guys, here is another fresh batch of finds. And the reason why I'm gonna be showing so much in this clip is because of you guys, because enough ad revenue has generated to where YouTube has cut me another check. And of course, with my YouTube checks, I always get my hands on things to showcase in videos, and of course, beef up the collection as well. So thank you guys very much for uh, pulling off what I do and sacrificing the 10 seconds to watch an ad before my videos. So what did I leave work with? Well, snagged the most recent uh, Dream Theater official bootleg release. Uh, this is part of the Lost Not Forgotten archives. This is when Dream and Day reunite. Uh, this was when they performed their debut album, When Dream and Day Unite, live in its entirety back in 2004. And this is a very special gig because um, Charlie Dominici and um, Derek Sherinian uh, reunited with the band uh, for the encore. Of course, uh, Charlie Dominici was the original vocalist, and Derek Sherinian was the keyboard player that was in the band before Jordan Rudis. And basically, we have the full When Dream and Day Unite album, along with the encore of To Live Forever and Metropolis, which were two tracks that were kind of written and demoed around the time of the first album. Now, this was released um, as part of the Yetze Jam Records label uh, on CD, as well as DVD. I have both of those in my collection, and um, this is definitely one of my favorite Yetze Jam uh, Records releases, and it's cool to see it get a widespread release as part of this Lost Not Forgotten Archives release. Here is the back. Gatefold sleeve. We have some cool live shots of the band. Now this comes pressed on standard black vinyl. I'll showcase just one of the records just so you can kind of see what it looks like. And unfortunately, the only one, um, the only release that I'm missing from this series is the uh, the Master of Puppets live release. Um, I have not been able to get that in for the store. Uh, but when I saw that this was available as an import, because it's only come out in Europe so far, it has not gotten a proper U.S. release, I immediately jumped on it. And of course, I had to stash a copy aside for myself, because I am snagging up all of these Dream Theater 
Lost Not Forgotten releases. So very happy to have this in the collection. And here is something very, very cool. Um, I saw that these were available for pre-order from one of the other distributors that we don't really order too much from. They're based in Canada. Uh, but when I saw them, I was quite intrigued. And I was already quite aware of these particular compilations. And um, I'm just going to showcase them on camera. So these right here are reissues of German Black Sabbath compilations that came out back in the 70s. So the first one here, this one's called Attention Black Sabbath. And the track list is kind of wonky in some places. It's mainly tracks from the first album and Paranoid. So, you know, just I'll showcase the track list on camera so you can see for yourself. It's a bit kind of random, but they are rather interesting. And plus, it's Black Sabbath. Of course, I'm going to buy it. And uh, these come on the sort of bluish uh, Fontana label there, which is quite unique. And then, of course, I also got Attention Volume 2. Um, I remember my, my good friend Mark, who unfortunately passed away recently, uh, found a copy of this at, at a local flea market, which was pretty insane. And I saw it in person. It was pretty cool. And um, the track list here works in some songs, uh, particularly from uh, the first three albums. So first album, Paranoid and Master of Reality. And this is pretty cool. Same Fontana label there. And there is also Reflection. And this features tracks from Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, and Sabotage. Features a very interesting uh, album cover there. And um, I don't even think the official Black Sabbath social media pages have announced these reissues coming out. So I'm, I'm, I don't know if they're kind of under the radar. I guess they're somewhat official. I'm honestly not quite sure, but I was intrigued when I saw the listings up uh, for them. And um, I was very intrigued to uh, get these in for the store and also get some copies in for myself because I am a huge Sabbath fan. So very happy to have these German comps. And next up, we get into some proggy territory. Uh, we have Genesis, The Lamb Lies in Rochester, Volume 1 and 2. Uh, this is a radio broadcast of the band uh, doing The Lamb live in its entirety, along with, with a uh, encore of the musical box. Um, I listened to a portion of this broadcast on YouTube just to kind of get an idea on what it sounds like. And honestly, sounds rather good to my ears. And plus, you know, it's it's The Lamb. It's one of their best albums, hands down. And also the last one with, with uh, Peter Gabriel. And I'll show you the gatefold. And the uh, basically everything is kind of the same between volume one and two. Same liner notes, just different track list, of course. This features... It's kind of interesting how it's all kind of sequenced because if you're a Genesis fan, you know how the album goes. But obviously, Volume 1 starts with The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, and it ends with The Waiting Room. And usually it would end with The Chamber of 32 Doors, and then Volume 2 begins with Anyway. So it's kind of a bit wonky in terms of the start and finish points, but regardless, it's the full show spread across two releases, four LPs total. Very happy to have this in the collection, so we're stoked to give it a listen. And that is what I got with my YouTube check. And then upon coming home, I got a package from Third Man Records. And it is the time of year where they start sending out the newest vault package. And that is exactly what I received. This is vault package number 50. And it is devoted to The White Stripes live at the Detroit Institute of Arts on November 2nd, 2001. Uh, the band did uh, two sets uh, at this venue, and they are featured here. Both sets are included. Nice skatefold sleeve with some cool kind of colorized black and white photos. And there is all kinds of bells and whistles with this release. Uh, first up in the package, they uh, give you this nice little insert that kind of has like this sort of textured, torn edge to it. And it explains the package, gives you some backstory behind uh, the shows. And the first LP comes pressed on 
clearish vinyl with red smoke, which is very nice. Um, I do have to say, with the recent vault packages that have been devoted to the White Stripes, um, they have been really kind of been pushing the boundaries in terms of what they could do with the red, white, and black color scheme because you can honestly really do so much in terms of colored vinyl with those colors. But lately, you know, they, they've been doing some cool splatter releases and um, they've also done this. So they're really um, kind of pushing the envelope and that's really awesome to see. And then also, you also get some cool photo cards taken from the show as well as sound check. picture of Jack right there so very nice and then the second LP which is devoted to the second set kind of comes on this sort of hazy white colored vinyl has a slight kind of marbled effect if you kind of look at it at a certain light it kind of almost has a pearl uh, type of look to it which is very nice so this is absolutely gorgeous and um, that is not it there is much much more to it uh, because obviously you can listen to both sets on your turntable, but then you can also watch it on your television because there is a DVD which features both sets here. Very nice. And not exactly White Stripes related, but it is a cool addition to the package. We also have a 7-inch of Jack White's newest single, Taking Me Back. And what is cool is um, this 7-inch, it just comes pressed on standard black vinyl. I'll showcase it just for the sake of showcasing everything. And it also even comes with this pretty cool uh, card, which has the lyrics to the, uh, to the song. Um, this is only available in this vault package. You cannot get the 7-inch anywhere. Um, I believe there was a tri-color pressing that was made available at the uh, Third Man storefronts in Nashville, Detroit, and London. But in terms of standard black vinyl, um, it is only available in the vault package. So that is a cool exclusive piece to own. And um, man, between the last clip and this one, I have a lot of listening to do. And Christmas is only four days away. I'm going to be quite busy. All right, guys. So Christmas is only three days away, and I have a bunch of early Christmas gifts to show you guys. So the first couple I'm going to show are ones that I got from some of my coworkers at the record store that I manage. Uh, the first one here is from my good friend Patrick. Um, him and I were kind of going back and forth over who was going to have this record because our boss brought it in. And we were kind of just, you know, sitting on it for a while and we were trying to figure out who was going to buy it because it's up his alley because he is a 60s psych kind of guy and I gravitated towards it for my own reasons, which I will show you. But needless to say, he said that one day he'll come across an original and he'll be content and he got me the album by the band Tomorrow. Tomorrow was a psychedelic rock band from the late 60s. And what is notable about this particular band is that it features a pre-yes Steve Howe, which is pretty cool, of course. Steve Howe uh, is the, of course, the most notable guitar player in Yes, and Yes is one of my favorite progressive rock bands, so I immediately was interested in this, mainly just due to that alone. But of course, um, the big notable song on this is uh, My White Bicycle. Um, they also do a cover of uh, Strawberry Fields Forever. So uh, definitely excited to check this album out. I personally have never listened to it. Uh, this is a Record Store Day pressing that came out back in 2015. I was not aware that this came out. Um, it is of the mono mix, and as you can see, they do replicate the fold-over kind of back cover uh, that they did in the UK. And check out the vinyl. Now, this is absolutely impressive. Let's try to get out of the sleeve. This comes on white vinyl with black and red splatter, and it looks absolutely sharp comes on that mid-60s sort of parlophone label. It looks absolutely awesome, and I am definitely excited to give this album a listen. So thank you very much, Patrick. You are a very good man 
for gifting me with such an awesome record. And then this next record is from my co-worker Nico. Um, this particular band is one of his favorites, and he has been playing this in the store a lot. It, it immediately caught my ear, and I stashed away a copy for myself since we got a good amount in. And um, when we were leaving work tonight, he told me to look in my bag, and he snuck in a copy of Lily's. Better Can't Make Your Life Better. Uh, they are a 90s band, and this album sounds like a cross between The Kinks and The Monkees. And that right there is what just gravitated me. Hell, I even sensed a little bit of Of Montreal in some places. Uh, but this is such a fun listen. If you are into 60s sort of, you know, British pop type stuff, uh, you are going to like this album. And I never really delved into Lily's, you know, other stuff. So this is the first album of theirs that I have in my collection. And perhaps it will kind of give me the push to check out more of their stuff. So thank you very much, Nico, for this. And now we get into the big kahuna. Now, these are all gifts from the youngest members of the VC. Now, the youngest members of the VC is a group consisting of myself, Mike over at Retro Spin Vinyl, Emma at 8 Vinyl Low, uh, Jenna over at Spins and Needles, and Marican over at Marican Layman Craddock. Um, they all have respective YouTube channels, and we basically all connected through YouTube. We became best friends. We did a big, massive meetup in Nashville this past summer. I, um, I did a whole documentary on it, if you want to peel back and check that out. And we always, you know, get each other Christmas gifts, and we always try to outdo each other in terms of, you know, getting the holy shit type gifts. Needless to say, we all pulled it off. We all got each other stuff that, you know, we just were just, like, Oh my God. So there is a lot to get through here. So the first uh, couple of records I'm going to show you are from Mike and uh, he hooked me up with a Christmas standard. And if you watch his channel, he is the king of Christmas music. I know no one uh, aside from him that has a massive in-depth uh, Christmas music collection. And he hooked me up with the Beach Boys Christmas album. I feel like it's sacrilege that I don't have this because I love the Beach Boys. And of course, you know, Little Saint Nick, Merry Christmas Baby, uh, We Three Kings, you know, White Christmas. Um, you know, this is just, you know, solid, you know, Christmas staples. I've heard these songs so many times and yet I never pushed myself to get a copy of it. And Mike finally did it for me. So thank you very much, Mike. And he also hooked me up with a cool Canadian folk duo. Uh, this is Ian and Sylvia, uh, Early Morning Rain. Um, I have been wanting to kind of build up my folk collection, and he hooked me up with this album here. Very generous of him. Thank you very much, Mike. And the next couple of records are from Jenna over at Spins and Needles. And when she asked me what I wanted for Christmas, I said one word. Zappa because she is a huge Zappa fan. She hooked me up with Apostrophe for my birthday some time ago and I have been needing to beef up my Zappa collection. Plus I've just been simply been wanting to and just to dig into his discography. She hooked me up with Hot Rats. This is one that I have been wanting to get my hands on for the longest time. Um, I actually, I believe I saw a copy of this when we all went to Nashville and I didn't pick up a copy but she finally made it happen. This is a recent reissue that was done for its um, 50th anniversary. Um, I want to say this was like a couple years back. And what is cool with this pressing is the fact that it comes pressed on pink vinyl, which is absolutely awesome with some very cool picture labels. Good, good stuff. And she also got me, once I get this record back in its sleeve, she hooked me up with Shake Your Booty. Of course, this one features Bobby Brown. Um, there's also another one of my favorites on here, Broken Hearts Are For Assholes. Uh, great rocking tune there. And um, I believe when Mike and I were coming home from Nashville, we did listen to this as I was kind of dozing in and out of sleep because I was up for record store day that morning. Uh, but So I do remember bits and pieces of this, but now I can 
properly give it a, you know, a listen in front of the turntable. Solid album. Super stoked to have it. Thank you very much, Jenna, for hooking me up with some more Zappa because it was much, much needed. And now the next couple of records are from Emma over at 8 and Vinyl Low. She hooked me up with Bob Mold, Sunshine Rock. I never have delved into Bob Mold's work. Um, I've heard of the name a dozen times. Uh, she said that this would definitely be up my alley. I'm taking her word for it. I'm very excited to give this album a spin. And then she hooked me up with an insane piece of kiss related vinyl and she had got this over at a uh, riverbend uh, uh records which is a uh, billy hurst's uh record store uh billy is a is a part of the vinyl community he has a great channel on youtube you get, definitely got to check it out uh she and marican had gone to his store fairly recently and she came across this piece and said yep that is for dylan and Let's just say when we were doing our video chat, opening up everything, I had to look at this thing for a good minute just to process what it was. And what she got me is this. This is Peter Chris Out of Control. This is a sealed 1980 US pressing. Of course, Out of Control was the first album that Peter did when he uh, left Kiss and still sealed and i think it m might remain that way i don't know if i want to crack the seal um at at this point now i'm just having a great time just looking at it just because this is such an amazing piece of kiss related vinyl to have in my collection so thank you so much emma for this this is so so cool and then this last batch of records is from marican and when she gifted me this, um, she had looked at my Discogs, and I, I'm guessing I didn't have this catalog because I do own a copy of this record. Uh, but needless to say, this right here is a significant upgrade. And she left a note on the wrap on the wrapping paper and said that this was an essential Christmas album to own, and it absolutely is. And that is the soundtrack to a Charlie Brown Christmas. Um, this is, uh, to be honest, aside from the Beach Boys record that Mike gifted me, this was the only Christmas record that I have in my collection. Um, I just, I've never delved too deep into that world. But uh, this is an absolute standard, and it, plus, you know, Charlie Brown is a part of my childhood, so I have a lot of fondness for the soundtrack as well as the, you know, the special. Now, this is a recent, um, I wouldn't say not too recent, this came out back in 2012, Craft Recordings uh, put this out, and as you can see, this comes with like a nice sort of mirror finish to it, a uh, nice embossment on the sleeve, there's the back. And this right here is the Walmart exclusive pressing. And this comes pressed on red glitter vinyl. Hopefully you guys can catch that. There we go. You can see the glitter there. This is absolutely cool. Now what I have in my collection already is a standard kind of green vinyl pressing that I got some time ago. Um, I'll be trading that in at the shop and getting my hands on something else. And um, this will be my new go-to copy. So thank you very much, Marikin, for this. And next up, she had left another note on the other record and said that this was the numbers escaping me, but from an Australian band. And I'm thinking to myself, who could it possibly be? And sure enough, I, I should have known it was the obvious. ACDC Black Ice. This came out back in 2008. Um, I remember this album when it first came out. There was a lot of hype around it. Uh, Rock and Roll Train was everywhere. That was the main single off of this. Um, I didn't really approach this album when it came out because I wasn't a huge ACDC fan at the time. But upon digging into their discography, honestly, this album is solid. You know, it's, it's ACDC. It's more of the same. You know what you're going to get and you won't be disappointed. Except in this case, this is actually a double album. So it is a heavy dose of ACDC old-fashioned rock 
great artwork here. Nice kind of spot varnish finish, gatefold sleeve. And I'll just, I'll just showcase like one of the printed inners. Some nice artwork here. So solid package overall and just a great hole that I can fill in uh, in my ACDC collection because I think all I need now is ball breaker and I'm, my collection's basically complete. So I gotta sn snag that now because now the completest bug of me is going nuts. And the next record that she gave me, um, she had said that this is one of her favorite local bands and she actually gifted me a record by this band, I believe for my birthday some time ago. And that is Blackstone Cherry and this album is called Kentucky. Very fitting because they are from Kentucky. That's where Marican is from. Um, I actually remember when I was working at FYE, um, they did an exclusive pressing of this. So I remember seeing this at the store a lot. And um, I am very excited to dig into this album. Uh, according to Marican, they kind of dig into some of their more folky, kind of bluesy type roots, which is totally fine by me because I do dig that style a lot. Nice printed inner. And what's cool with this pressing is that it comes pressed on sort of hazy, translucent colored vinyl, which is very cool. And the last record that she sent me, as well as basically all of us, um, she had left a note saying that this was her top album of the year. And needless to say, everyone in the group got this album for Christmas. And crazy enough, I don't have any solo albums by this particular drummer of Queen. I am talking about Roger Taylor. This is his newest album called Outsider. Um, Roger has been rather prolific, you know, during his time in and out of Queen, um, you know, putting out solo albums back, you know, when the band was active and of course still putting out solo stuff after the band was basically done. And this is his most latest effort. Uh, Marican has been raving about it and I am so glad to have this in my collection. Um, Roger's daughter also did the artwork, which is rather nice does come with a nice printed inner as well with lyrics as well as photos of the man himself so mike jenna emma marican thank you guys all so much you were all my best friends wonderful people i love you all and you guys seriously outdid yourself and I have a lot of listening to do still between everything that I've showed you guys already and all of this stuff here, including the stuff from my coworkers. <sighs> I'm probably going to be caught up listening to everything sometime like quarter way through the new year. Crazy. Okay, so as I said in the last um, clip that you just saw, I did end up trading in my green vinyl pressing of uh, the Charlie Brown Christmas soundtrack because Marikin got me a very solid upgrade. And what did I leave with? Well, I purchased this right here, Mother Mania, the best of the mothers. Um, I've been digging deeper into Zappa, of course, thanks to Jenna for giving me a prime kickstart with Hot Rats and Shake Your Booty. Um, I've been wanting to dig into some of his earlier work with the Mothers of Invention, and I decided to pick up this compilation. Now, this right here is the Newberry Comics pressing, and this is quite a visually appealing colored vinyl pressing. This is called the Double Circles and Splatter Press, which you can see right there. So we basically have pink and then purple with black splatter. And that this is a very beautiful looking pressing. And I'm definitely excited to work my way through some of the early material of the mother. So very stoked to have this. And then also on a whim, I decided to purchase the missing hole in my ACDC collection. Because after Marican had also got me Black Ice, I took a look at my ACDC collection and realized what I didn't have. And sure enough, I bought the missing piece. And that is 1995's Ball Breaker. Uh, this one features Hard as a Rock, Cover You in Oil, Boogeyman, which is a cool kind of spooky too. 
Um, Burning Alive is one of my favorites. Hail Caesar is great. Uh, the title track is good fun. Just a really solid album. Uh, Rick Rubin had um, had actually produced this. So it kind of has, this one has a bit of a dry sound to it. But uh, this does welcome back in Phil Rudd behind the drum kit. So you have the classic back in black lineup at it once again. And as always, nice printed inner sleeve with liner notes and photos. And then I'll also just take out the vinyl to show you what it looks like. Custom label, which is unison with all the other reissues. So very good stuff. And happy to say that my ACDC studio collection is now finally complete. All right, guys, the time of year is come. Merry Christmas, everybody. I am filming this clip on December 25th. Um, great holiday well spent with my parents and my godmother. Very low-key affair, but you know what? Those are the best kind. You just avoid the hustle and bustle of everything that surrounds the holidays. And uh, I have some cool gifts to show you guys that I got this year. And it's going to be a mixture of both vinyl, and I'm also going to show some CD releases, just because, you know, it's still music-related. But what did I get? Well, I'm going to start off with the monolith here. <laughs> this thing is so big. So check this out. I got Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, Out of This World Live, 1970 to 1997. This is a 10 LP box set, which brings together five unique shows slash live albums in this set. So we have the Isle of Wight Festival from 1970, uh, California Jam from 74, uh, works live from Montreal from 77, even though some bits were recorded elsewhere, but still. Uh, Royal Albert Hall from 1992, and then an unreleased show from Phoenix, Arizona in 97. So it is cool to see um, a collection like this get released, particularly because I have always wanted a vinyl copy of the complete works live album because it was first released um as emerson lake and palmer in concert as a single lp around the late 70s uh but they expanded it in the early 90s and has never gotten a vinyl pressing um isla white is great to have it's their first kind of well actually second show that they ever did in front of you know six hundred thousand people which is totally insane cal jam legendary show for them royal albert hall is another good one and i'm excited to hear the phoenix show um, I'm not going to take out everything right now to show because um, this is a candidate for this unboxing series. So you'll see this unboxed at some point down the road in the future. And next up, we have some monkeys. Rest in peace, Michael Nesmith. Uh, this is Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Jones Limited. Uh, this is the recent mono reissue that Friday Music has put out. Um, I believe this is from the Monkeys in Mono box set that they did some time ago. Uh, fetches high um, price tags, upwards to like 400 bucks, And uh, hopefully that this is a sign, um, considering that this is the first kind of standalone release that they're doing for the Mono catalog, that the other albums will follow suit. But on this record, um, there's She Hangs Out, Love Is Only Sleeping, Words, one of my favorite Monkeys tunes. Um, of course, Pleasant Valley Sunday, uh, Daily Nightly, Star Collectors, good fun, great record. And um, out of the two colored pressings that are out there, because I believe there's turquoise and purple, I got the turquoise vinyl pressing. And as you can see, Friday Music has their fun with the original Cole Gems label, and they just put their uh, label there. Rhino does the same thing when they reissue Monkey stuff. So very cool to uh, get my hands on this reissue um, for Christmas. And also this is the first Mono Monkeys pressing that I have in my collection. So this is really awesome to own. And next up, we have another giant oversized deluxe package. And that is Genesis The Last Domino. This is a recent compilation that came out to coincide with the tour that just took place. Uh, unfortunately, I did not go because the uh, ticket prices were a bit high. Uh, but basically, this compilation is essentially the set list of the show. It uh, opens up with Duke's End, which is basically a reprise of Behind the Lines, Turn It On Again, Mama, Land of Confusion, um, Fading Lights is on here, which is pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, it does touch into some older territory. Um, there's things such as uh, Dancing with the Moonlit Night, Carpet Crawlers, I Know What I Like, um, just 
all kinds of good stuff. Lamb lays down on Broadway. Um, this is a four LP set, and it kind of comes in this book style double gatefold type design, which is pretty nice. And there's photos taken from, I, I want to say these are from the uh, dress rehearsal that they did. And, um, and just to showcase, you know, everything here. Well, not necessarily everything, but I'll just show one of them. Each record does come housed in a printed inner sleeve with photos and quotes from the band members. And just for the sake of showing, I'll take out one of the LPs and show you what, what it looks like. And basically, we have the track list listed on the label, and then we have the sort of falling domino effect on the other side. Uh, Mastered at Half Speed at Abbey Road by Miles Showell. So I'm sure this is going to be a solid collection. And also, I believe this is the first Genesis compilation to be ever released on vinyl. Now, compilations can never be perfect, um, whether it be just not in chronological order, certain eras being missed and whatnot. But I think, you know, in the grand scale, when it comes to Genesis, you know, and their legacy, you know, the hits came in the 80s when they kind of went more commercial. So I can see why... There is more of that on here, but it still tips to the older Peter Gabriel stuff uh, that should never go um, underlooked because it is good stuff. So happy to have this. And then I also got my hands on the new reissue of Rolling Stone's Tattoo You. Uh, the version that I opted for is the two LP version. So you get the main album on one LP, and then you get the Lost and Found Rarities on the second LP, which has all the off cuts, all the tracks that didn't make it on the album, all unreleased. And there's also an early version of Start Me Up as well. Showcase the gatefold. And then I'll just take out one of the... Um... Actually, you know what? I'll take both. Um... There you can see it comes with the original print and inner sleeve. And I'll showcase one of the records. Classic yellow Rolling Stones records label, which is pretty nice. And then, of course, since this is a deluxe package and there's extra bits and pieces, I'll show you another cool thing that they did for the uh, printed inner sleeve for the second LP. They kind of did a negative version of the um, printed inner sleeve artwork, which I think is a nice little nod. Uh, to the Led Zeppelin reissues, how they had the companion discs, and they just did like a negative version of the album cover. Um, and I believe Sabbath also followed suit with their uh, Technical Ecstasy box set, how they had the negative version for the remix. So I, I think maybe that's the new designing norm when it comes to remixes and things of that sort. So that is all I got vinyl-wise. And I have a couple of CD box sets to show you. Um going to start off with the one that I am very psyched for. Granted, I have all of this on vinyl, but you need to have multiple formats for some things. Got the Beatles Let It Be box. Uh, this has five CDs and a Blu-ray, a uh, beautiful hardbound book. Um, basically, you know, if you have the vinyl box set, you know, the book, it's basically the same as this, just adapted for a large scale, you know, 12 by 12 format. But, um, this is such a great set, um, thoroughly enjoy it. And, uh, so glad to have a CD copy, uh, in the collection as I do with the other deluxe versions that have been done with Sgt. Pepper, the White Album and Abbey Road. Um, fingers crossed there's more to come in the future. So got my hands on that. And then I also got this gem here. Beach Boys, Feel Flows, The Sunflower and Surf Subsession 69 to 71. I also have the vinyl box set um, for this uh, particular release, but the box set only has a fraction of what is featured on this because of course we get the two respective albums sunflower and surfs up but then we get unreleased uh live tracks uh various alternate mixes and new mixes live material um other outtakes um acapella versions um even like more demos and things early backing tracks like there is so much um in this particular box set and um you know when it comes to beach boys collections there is just a wealth of audio material featured in these sets. So this is going to be quite an immersive listening experience. You know, I just thoroughly enjoyed, you know, listening to the albums and some of the extra tracks on the vinyl box. It's about to get real here. And I mean, just, just look at the track list there. I mean, obviously you can't really see all of it clearly, but there's a lot to sink your teeth into. And this is uh, presented in like a book style 
type format with uh, liner notes, photos of the band members, talking about the history, and um, there's a track by track annotation uh, portion, which is pretty cool. And then all the discs appear here. And as you can see, they come on the uh, Brother Records label, which is awesome. And then we have a nice little sunflower there because, well, sunflower is featured. So got that. And then there is also another box set that I'm actually going to be receiving tomorrow. I'll explain why I'm getting it a bit late, but uh, keep your eyes peeled in the next clip to see what exactly that is. Okay, so the box set that I was talking about in the last clip. So my parents kind of faux pawed. They accidentally got me a David Bowie box set that I already own in my collection. Um, I had asked for a specific new one that just came out fairly recently. But instead of going through the whole process of returning through Amazon and whatnot, brought it in at the shop and I was able to trade it in and get the box set that I had asked for. So no big deal there. And the box set that I was talking about is this right here, David Bowie, Brilliant Adventure, 1992 to 2001. This just came out uh, fairly recently. Um, the long-awaited Era 5 box set. Um, I am a huge fan of these David Bowie box sets that focus in on certain periods of his career. They're basically doing it in chronological order. They not exactly from the very beginning, from like 69 they started, and then they do like 69 to 74, 74 to 76, so on and so forth. And it basically just brings together the albums that were released in that time frame, along with some cool bonus extras. You get some live material, you get unreleased albums, compilations, you get a nice hardbound book. And uh, this basically covers Bowie's output from the 1990s and up into the uh, early 2000s. It includes the unreleased uh, Toy album, which finally gets released here. Um, features all the albums released from this period. So I am so happy that this is in my collection. Uh, sure, yes, these are available on vinyl as well. Um, kind of pricey, um, especially this one. Uh, but I always pick them up individually uh, when they do the individual releases. And sometimes, in most cases, I will find the exclusive pieces that are only available within the box set at record stores released separately. So... Might come across them in the future, but that is the elusive box set that I was talking about in the last clip. And then upon returning to work, I stumbled across a record that my co-worker slash friend John got me for Christmas. This has been in my stash forever. I personally don't know when I would have bought it because I'm always buying up other stuff that's either in the stash or not in the stash. Um, but I managed to receive from him... This record here, the band is called Acid's Trip, Strings of Soul. Uh, they're a cool kind of 70s sounding occultish uh, hard rock band. Um, they just released this album this year and just the band's name alone sounded pretty cool for me to check out. So I ordered some copies for the store and I played it once over Spotify and I thoroughly enjoyed it and I decided to uh, stash it away and I would snag it at some point and John made that happen. So thank you very much, John. I'll show you guys the back cover. Also does come with a cool insert, which has all the lyrics and also a pretty cool kind of graphic of them on the uh, back there. Now this right here is what is described on the hype sticker as the ultra limited colored variants. And it comes on sort of split color, brown and gold colored vinyl. And the label that put this out um, is a label called Heavy Psych Sounds Records. Uh, kind of more or less the European counterpart of what Riding Easy uh, Records does here in the U.S. with releasing, you know, doom metal, stoner metal, psych rock, 70s tinged, you know, garage type stuff. Things of that nature, uh, particularly the retro nature. So they're, Heavy Psych Sounds is doing in Europe what Riding Easy Records is doing in the U.S. So... Thank you very much, John, for this. And speaking of Riding Easy Records, I took it upon myself uh, to stock up on some brown acid titles. Uh, my parents had given me a Visa gift card, and I figured I would use it at the shop. And I picked up several brown acid titles uh, that I had been needing to get in the collection. Um, I got the fourth trip, the, the sixth trip. This is kind of slightly out of order. 
and the fifth trip. I was kind of hoping that we had the third. I could have sworn we had it at one point uh, because that is now the missing piece in my collection between two and four. So I was managed to get three consecutive copies. They all come on standard black vinyl, but I will showcase the vinyl for the fifth trip. Uh, Cause one of the fun things about buying riding easy stuff from the distributors that I buy from for the store is that when it comes to color variants, it does not list it anywhere. It's kind of a stroke of luck. If you know, I can get one random copy, open it and it's a color variant or sometimes it's standard black. Uh, but in the case of Brown acid, the fifth trip, this comes pressed on red vinyl, which is pretty cool. Now, you can easily pick for yourself the color variants that you want if you buy directly from uh, Riding Easy Records. But uh, I guess there's a slight thrill to um, getting, I guess, a random colored variant depending on what you get. So, snagged that up. And then I also decided to pick up an album that... I have heard several times play in the store. A couple of co-workers of mine have played this record, and it immediately caught my ear. Um, legendary classic uh, folk musician from the 60s. It is Donovan, the Hurdy Gurdy Man. Um, really enjoy this album a lot. I kind of sense some, you know, Mark Bolin, T-Rex, you know, Ziggy Bowie type vibes from this, particularly like in the vocal style. Um, just a little bit of tinge of that, but honestly, this is such a solid, um, solid album. This is the Sundazed reissue, um, features the mono, uh, mix, pressed at quality record pressings. Nice green colored vinyl to match the color scheme of the uh, album artwork. Yellow, uh, epic label. This was also mastered by uh, Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio. So this is going to be a wonderful sounding pressing and I'm very happy to have this in the collection. And last but not least is a record that I have absolutely fallen in love with since I received it uh, for my birthday back in September um, from Emma over at 8 Vinyl Low. Uh, she hooked me up with an album that, shockingly, I did not own in my collection, but upon listening to it for the first time, it was just love at first listen. And I'll, I'll just explain the whole thing here. I'm just going to show it on camera. The Who Sell Out. This is a Japanese pressing that came out fairly recently. Um, Polydor has reissued uh, some Japan-only Who albums slash compilations. Um, some compilations bring together like singles and B-sides. Uh, there's one of uh, the album, a quick one. And then, of course, there is The Who Sell Out. And... Like I said, I've been loving this album, and I figured I would uh, get my hands on a very nice Japanese pressing of it. And as you can see, completely different artwork, comes with the OB strip. And the way this is packaged is very interesting. Uh, comes in a nice resealable bag. And I'll take the contents out. So, of course, you get the main jacket itself, uh, kind of on very thin, flimsy um cardstock which i'm sure this is how the original came so i'm not going to dock it because it's a little flimsy but comes like this and then you have all the lyrics on the back side ob comes off just like this and as you can see it kind of has the sort of british type fold over except it's kind of has a curve on the top which i believe was probably unique to uh japan at the time and also does come with the uh, insert, which has the rest of the lyrics here. So it begins on the back cover and then it continues on the insert here. And also in the resealable jacket is a hard kind of cardstock sleeve, which houses the record. And on the back, we also have um, some print, which appears on the back as you're looking at the resealable bag. But inside this thick cardstock sleeve, we have the record itself that comes in the Japanese kind of rounded um, sleeve. And here is the vinyl itself. Comes on the red Polydor label. And this is also a completely different cut uh, from the recent um, deluxe version that came out 
this past year, and Emma had given me the 2LP Deluxe version. So this right here is completely different uh, from the 2LP Deluxe version. As to what the differences will be, I'm not quite sure. Probably some minor EQ things, but I will be curious as to what the differences are between the two. But um, it's great to have them. Perhaps I'll do, I'll do the comparison. But nonetheless, it's just great to have another copy of perhaps my favorite Who album. So there you guys go. That is my vinyl haul of all the records that I acquired within the month of December this year in 2021. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support this channel, be sure to check me out on Patreon. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the records spinning. Thank you.